Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with the Niche Real Estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We have a special usual suspect that has not been around for the last six months, and he's back. He's back, baby. Dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Mark, I'm very good. Glad to be back. Glad, glad to be back here and uh, to be with you guys. It's it's great to see you. We got Taria putting in the reps. Harris, Taria, how are things? Things are well. Good to see you. We got your partner in crime, Landon, AI Harris, the aquatic investor. Landon, how are you? Doing well. It's nice and sunny here. Got no complaints. Yeah, good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things in Sin City? Good. We're busy. Yeah, very busy. So we've got a really interesting topic today. We were talking about luxury virtual assistants or VAs. So Scott Bossman, what is a luxury VA? How would you define it? I think a luxury VA is that person in your, well, first of all, you have to get to the point, right, in your business where maybe um, you need one of these luxury VAs or um, you could pay for their services. Maybe they cost a little bit more um, or, you know, just uh, get to the point where uh, you're able to hire out some things that you're no longer comfortable with or that maybe uh, there's some question as to whether or not I would want to be doing in the first place. So I have a luxury, my lux, one of my best luxury VAs, I think is a paralegal. Um, and this paralegal for me does a lot of great work. I mean, if a deal comes across my desk and it's what Mike Dano and I call a humdinger, right? If there's been one transaction in the last 30 years and that person bought it on a warranty deed and they're the only person on the deed or everybody on that deed is able to sign a new deed, I have no problem with that deal. I have no problem buying up the deed and getting the deal done, right? But every once in a while you get, um, there's there's five or six transactions in the last 30 years. And uh, maybe, maybe an affidavit needs to be drawn up because you're buying from a trust or maybe uh, a spouse uh, who used to be on the deed needs to sign off on it. Um, and there needs to be some language there uh, that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up my my uh, paralegal and say, "Hey man, I need your help on this deal." Uh, you know, and and there are different types of deals, right? Like, can you do a deal review for me? Sure. You know, check the chain of title; it's clean back thirty years, no issues. Um, you know, and that's a twenty five dollar fee. Now, if he takes it a little bit further, if he has to drop some different documents for me, maybe do a deed or an affidavit or that type of thing. I'm paying him 50 to 75. I've paid him a hundred bucks in the past helping with a probate issue or 150 bucks helping with a probate issue. So that to me is a luxury VA. Uh, and I think it's important, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be in this business long term and you're going to be doing, you know, ideally 10, 20, 30 deals a month, um, there are going to be some of these deals that come across your desk and, and somebody for that, for that purpose is, is going to be highly valued in your business. So a paralegal sounds expensive, it, hence the term luxury, right? Expensive. Like a like a Louis Vuitton VA. How how much are you paying your 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 paralegal per hour? I mean, it all depends on the task, right? So, um, like like he he charges per um, per transactional item. So if he's going to do a chain of title search for me or a, like a deal review, I think it's twenty five and thirty bucks. Right. Okay. If he's going to do the deed, if he's going to draft the deed for me with some special language, uh, or needs to draw up an affidavit or that type of thing, you know, the deed is like another twenty-five bucks. Any type of other document on top of that, he, he charges a little bit more for. But really, I mean, Mark, uh, our cost to do these deals anyway is quite low, right? I mean, if I'm going right. to self-close, uh, it's costing me my time and some recording fees. Um, and you know that's pretty much about it. So uh, why not pay a hundred or a couple hundred bucks uh, on the front end to make sure that you are confident and secure with the deal, uh, and the margins we make are going to make up for that uh, in spade. No, I I love it. I love it. So 
Last question, and we'll move on. Where do you find an affordable paralegal like this? Because I know local law firms here, their paralegals are like 175 an hour, where the attorney might be four or 500 an hour. No, that's a great question. Uh, th- there are some resources. I mean, you can find them, find them on uh, Upwork or Fiverr. There are paralegals on those sites. Uh, you could drop a line in the Facebook group. I mean, we got, what, 10,000 members in there now and, and a lot of land investors uh, doing uh, high volume with their deals. So I'd, I'd drop a line in there and, you know, ask if anybody has a paralegal they might be willing to, to share. Yeah. I mean, all all problems can be solved by community. My mm-hmm. networks, Facebook group, the, the collective intelligence can really get any problem solved. But I, I, I'm really enjoying this topic because I really never thought of, of a, a luxury VA. This is kind of unique. So let's go to Taria, putting in the reps Harris. What, what would you consider your luxury VA? And, and, and then Landon, maybe you're going to have to argue with Taria on this. <laughs> I'm sure we have different ones. Um, I would say that our luxury VA what is actually a team of people who manage a lot of our social media posts. Um, so from Instagram, um, not necessarily Facebook Marketplace. We have a different team for that, but um, other parts of Facebook marketing and advertising, um, TikTok, whatever platforms we're on, we have a team of people who manages all of those posts and brings the leads to us, et cetera. And that has been a luxury uh, for us, indeed, because we don't necessarily love social media, but it's a necessity for this business, at least for our business, it's a necessity. So having an entire team that manages all that, we don't necessarily have to worry about the videos or what's the content. They send us a content calendar every month and they produce really good things. So that's a luxury for us. Yeah, I I, I, I can just imagine you guys going out on a date and, and talking about land business and be like, can you believe someone on TikTok just bought, you know, five acres out here? And they do. Yeah. They do. They yeah. do. I used to think TikTok was just for dancing, but now it's, it's for other things. It is, uh, surprisingly. And- Surprisingly, and look, do I care that China is using it as a surveillance tool? Absolutely not. If it increases <laughs> our passive income, that's between the governments. I'm not. I'm not getting in, in, involved with it. But okay, we don't get but me, so when, when you're talking about social media, though, where we'll leave Facebook aside because I know that's probably your favorite. You got Instagram, mm-hmm. TikTok, let's say YouTube, mm-hmm. Twitter. Am I am I forgetting any? Are those um, the big? Are those the big those ones? Those are kind of the primary ones that that we've seen. Okay, uh, ones that have... only, yeah. If Go you ahead. can only pick one of them to post, throw threads mm. is new. Which one would you post? In um, I would probably post TikTok. Um, although it it's kind of a younger crowd um we're kind of playing for the long game like facebook started off with a lot of young people and then when the older people got on they moved you know people moved on um so now they're they're still relatively young but i would say building up a presence on tiktok is what we will focus on okay okay landon luxury Mm. VAs for you okay so sharia stole mine but so (laughs) You were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, w- I mean, that one is a is a yeah, definitely a high value luxury VA. I, the the one that the other luxury VA that comes to my mind the most is our Spanish speaking uh, sales manager. Um, we have someone who just gets on the phone. You know, if we have those Spanish speaking uh, customers, they want to talk to us in Spanish and. You know, they want to they want to feel comfortable. We want them to be also feel comfortable with, you know, our product, what we're selling. Um, so I think 
um, having a Spanish speaking uh, VA to be able to get on, communicate, they know the role, they know what we're trying to sell. Um, it's been really good for us. And it definitely has opened up a larger um, just community uh, of people that we're able to market to. Um, and this, you know, this role is, it, it depends on where you're working, right? So like there are certain necks of the wood that you probably don't need it, but you know, and there are certain places like, yeah, this does, it just adds to the value of being able to help um, just push what you're selling better. Uh, make make folks more comfortable. That is a luxury. Okay, going back to the Bossman question, how much yeah. are you guys paying for these luxurious VAs? So Tria, how much are you paying for the social media uh, team? The social media team runs anywhere from three to five hundred dollars a month, just depending upon uh, the calendar. Okay. Um, the Spanish speaking, she's actually hourly um mm. and she gets it's like 15, 15 but then 16 dollars yeah. an hour um but if she closes the deal she'll get an extra oh hundred dollars because right. she does other things for us but she also fields spanish speaking sales calls. correct so okay she's okay paid so, hourly so the call comes in and let's say there's a non-spanish speaking person that takes that call Mm -hmm. she's available right uh, right away to, to or how do you how do you what process or system is involved to, to get her involved with that customer yeah. or prospective customer so in our crm we have our uh sales managers in there and if they have a spanish speaking person they tag that person tag and she she gets a notification and flash that right. says there's someone you need to reach out to right Okay, Gucci, Gucci, Prada, Prada. <laughs> I love it. These are luxurious VAs. Holy cow. The, uh, between the paralegal, the social media team on TikTok, and a Spanish-speaking VA, I don't know. I mean, how much more luxurious can it get? Big pop. Uh, we haven't Wait. gotten the tape yet. <laughs> here, here, here it comes. Here comes the mic drop. Uh, look, I've got some uh, some A plus helpers on our team, and they are they are luxury. It is great, but I, I want to just say, like to everybody listening here, what one person considers to be a luxury might not be what somebody else considers to be a luxury. So I'll give you my 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 banger of a luxury VA in a second, but I'll tell you one of my most important VAs that I really could not operate without. And I consider this to be, you know, the first luxury I ever outsourced for. And that would be something as simple as an intake manager. To me, that's one of the greatest luxuries that you can have in this business, because truthfully, without it, you can't scale. You can't grow, right? You want to get to the point where you need social media help, where you need these, well, you got to be able to buy property. And if you are the one doing all of the buying, guess what? You don't even get to listen to this podcast and put it into practice <laughs> because you're not ready, right? You're not ready. But a true luxury VA for me is I have a VA. I don't think this has ever been spoken of on, uh, on any recording. And they are a geek pay account manager. This person's sole responsibility is to manage loans, make sure they get put in, make sure that we're getting paid, make sure that everything is going the way it should be. And uh, they're a geek pay, I don't even know if we have a name for it, just geek pay specialist, account specialist, something along those lines. But that, that's that's like truffle oil, mm -hmm. geek pay. Wow. You gotta have some, you gotta have the notes to justify somebody in this position. Uh, but that's a that's a luxury for us for sure. That is it's actually that is, a necessity. So it's not even a luxury. Yeah. So you know it's interesting because I'm glad you brought that up because there's some law, we'll just call it Bossman's law. Mm -hmm. Luxury <laughs> once enjoyed, no ceases become a luxury and then becomes a necessity. Right. Um and so Tate, would you say that Geek Pay Managers helped with the default rate? Yeah, 100%. I mean, 
they earn their keep. They're fantastic. I'm so grateful for what they do for us. Okay. Well, I, I too have a luxury VA. I have two. No, hold on. You thought mine was bougie. This yeah, is I'm real just... bougie. Like this is, <laughs> this is, this is some sort of high level luxury brand that I can't even pronounce. Okay. This is, this is next level here. Uh, I, you know what though? I, I don't know. I think, but you, you know, what's interesting though, to your point about the intake manager, not being a luxury, a necessity. And I would say, you know, uh, dude buddy's probably saying his paralegal is not a luxury. It's probably a necessity to get these deals done and done quickly to save time. Same thing with social media, right? Same thing with the Spanish speaking, uh, Sales manager. I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. Hey, this is this is not a luxury. This is not. You're, you're just justifying it. You're just justifying yeah. it right now. You're saying, yeah, yeah, no, like if, you gotta. Ha I have to it, do this, right? Like Boston you, has to have paralegal help because the guy didn't go to law school. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, if, enter if Mark know, with his luxury, which is if you know your <laughs> hourly rate and you know how much time you're spending in your email inbox. My luxury VA is inboxdone.com. So I have two virtual assistants just managing my email inbox. And it is glorious because I don't have to check my email. But if there's something that is urgent, they will vox me. And then I'm like, oh, I can go into my inbox. Imagine a day where you're not lost in an hour or even two hours of managing your inbox. It is glorious how much time, how much more productive I've been not having to do that. And then they do other things. Like, for example, let's say that I've got a coaching client that can't get on my calendar because I have time blocks on, on my calendar. Well, I can just contact via Voxer my luxury VA and say, please contact this client and find us a hole in my schedule and they will book it for me. And there's all these sort of creative things that they can do from a communication and managing my calendar, managing my inbox, the time saved. It's yeah, I will. I, it's not inexpensive, mm -hmm. but it's not what it's not that expensive. I want to say it's, not that more That's than my fair. paralegal. It's yeah. more. It's more. It's more than the paralegal. It's. It would be. I. Yeah. I mean, Tate, how much are you spending on on the uh, the geek pay? Uh, doesn't matter. Man. It doesn't matter what I spend. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what I spend. All right, Mark. Come on. Don't put throw me under the bus just because you're under there. Don't drag me down. I, I mean, uh, come under come under the bus. The, the exhaust fumes are, are fantastic down here. Let's just put it this way. Whether you're paying for somebody to write your emails or do your, you know, paralegal work for you, what matters is you are manufacturing time. Yeah. Right? And if you can Absolutely. manufacture time, you win. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Yep. No, it's absolutely. So the, these luxurious VAs, when you're at that level of your business, you're really, and, and really when you, when we talk about like a CEO mindset, a lot of that is where can I make more time or save more time to do the more productive, more revenue producing activities in the business. So, I mean, I can imagine if, if, if dude, buddy Bossman is, you know, spending an hour trying to find an answer to a legal question that's an hour that he's missing out on the things that really matter in his business, which might be creating a new automation. It might be, you know, doing some more market research for a new county. It might be analyzing a deal. It might be dealing with a, a pending sale, which, I mean, again, you all are probably just shaking your head being like, well, we don't do any of that because it's all outsourced now. But, but back in the day, maybe it was, but it's, it's, still, it's still giving you time. Uh, back and and giving you that time to be more productive, more strategic on how to grow and scale the business to the next level, and uh, and do that. So, uh, yeah. So, dude, buddy, great topic today.
Well, I think it was actually, you got to give credit where credit's due here. I think it was Tate's, uh, the luxury VA term. I think it was Tate. You know what? Let's give credit where credit is due. I love it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> Tate Litchfield, fantastic uh, topic today. I'm just, I'm just so excited to have Boston back. I'm just giving him all the credit, even when he doesn't <laughs> even deserve the credit. You know? Scott, th thank you for another sunny day today in Scottsdale, Arizona. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Tate, uh, we'll give you the, the final word on this. Any any last words on uh, the luxury VA and how we should think about it? You know, your first VA that you hire, it could be somebody to upload your list for your mailers into LG Pass. And for you, that's going to be a luxury because yeah. it's one thing you don't have to do. So you don't need somebody checking your email or writing your emails or managing social media for you. You will scale to that point. You will grow to it. Don't put the cart before the horse, right? A big mistake that you can make is go out and try to introduce people you don't need. So start small, follow the recipe, stay on the path, grow. And as you have problems, solve them with the A's. But don't solve, don't solve problems that don't exist, right? Mark had a real problem. And that's that he's on way too much spam email and he couldn't figure out how to unsubscribe. So he had to hire somebody to do it for him. Okay, great. Mark solved his problem. I had a problem. Taria had a problem. Landon, Bossman, they all had problems and they solved them. But they didn't go out and introduce people just because they heard it on a podcast. Right. So right. go at your own pace. Go at a pace that makes sense and you'll be good. Yeah. Great and that, that same advice can be used for technology as well. How often do we say, oh, yes. you know, you guys are using this, this <clears throat> platform, this technology, yep. but they don't have that problem yet. Right. You know what my my most hated question I get is, Mark? Oh my gosh. Let, let's play what? a game. Yes, <laughs> yes. Guess what my most hated question <laughs> is that I get all the time, whether at a boot camp or anything. So guess what it is? Guess. All right. Scott, what's your what's your guess? Uh what's your favorite CRM? No, uh, no. Uh, no. Sharia? That's good. That's a good question. I was gonna, but I was gonna say, what's your favorite tool? That's along the same lines. You're getting one. Uh -huh. Landon. See, I was thinking, how many zaps do you have? <laughs> very warm. You're hot. You're very hot. It's I'll give it to you, Landon. I'll give it to you. My my least favorite question that I get asked is what's your favorite zap? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, no, yeah. well, why do you why do you say that? Because my problems aren't your problems. Oh, uh, yeah. What yeah. I need to do might not be what you need to do, right? Yeah. So it goes back to what you said about technology. Like, why are, why do you, I mean, if you want to know how I do something, I'm happy to share it with you. But don't ask me what my, I don't have any favorite zaps. These are all just tools, right? They make right. my life better in some way, shape or form. But just because I'm using it doesn't mean you need it. You don't need this right now because you might not realize it's a problem. Uh, I just kind of hate that question because it's unfair and it doesn't matter what I say, you're going to write it down and you're going to want to do it. And it's like, you don't need it though. You don't do it yet. Focus on 30 a day. Just focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's such, that's such great advice. It really is. If you got nothing from this podcast, except that this, this podcast, you should, you know, bookmark it and just listen to that part again because it's going to save you a lot of time and frustration as you as you evolve in the land business for sure well this is a great topic but we're now at that point in the podcast where we get to tap on oh land is not touching his nose i thought for a second he was going to touch his nose <laughs> his, his, his tip of the week a website a resource a book something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses improve their lives what do you got? So, okay. I don't know if I've got quite the gems that, you know, Tate's bringing here because he's, he's dropping some nuggets of knowledge over here. But um, I like this book that I'm reading right now. It's called uh, A CEO Should Only Do Three Things and it's by uh, Trey Taylor. And basically this book is, basically it gives you basically three points of what a CEO should do. Um, there's you, the CEO should only be 
you know, uh, setting the culture of the company should be deciding who works for the company and then what goals you're going to pursue. After that, you've got to delegate everything off. And basically this book goes through a lot of kind of dispelling the fact that we need to be involved in every part of our business. Now, um, in the beginning of our business, absolutely. You've got to be involved. You've got to be uh, accountable for every part of it. But as you begin to develop the being a CEO, you want to delegate this stuff out. And then you've got to let your team do what they need to do. Um, so I, it's a book I'm really getting involved into. I haven't quite finished it yet, but it's been really interesting. Um, and it's something, like I said, this is a lot of kind of what we work with in our community and what we try to teach with everybody um, that we work with is, you know, don't try to do it all yourself, delegate it out, get your team to do what they're supposed to do, teach them properly, but get them to do what they need to do. So, yeah, I mean, you know, not to keep quoting T Tate Litchfield, but he's an expert at finding experts. And that's really what the CEO mindset is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, how do I do this? It's who, can do this and do it well and set that those expectations, set those goals, set that culture and create your own utopia. But to your point in the beginning, you have to know it well enough to, you have to work your way into the C-suite, right? And there's, there's nothing wrong with it. I think, I think we see two types of, of problems in coaching where we see people you know, really just want to just jump right to the C-suite and be CEO and they're not ready yet. And the opposite problem is they're ready and they're not willing to let go. <laughs> and and they don't want to make the investment in growth and scale because that's what it takes. And you have to, it, it's, it's hard to do when you're used to, um, you know, a certain sort of fixed expense and now we're pushing you, no, you're going to have to hire more people. You're going to have to outsource more. Like, wait, wait, wait but the cheapest person I can hire is myself or, you know, this, this is an expensive VA $3 an hour, but that's not the company needs now. They, they need you to grow and develop. And, um, and really that's, it's sort of a great metaphor for life, right? It's, you know, the, your, your business will, will really expose you as a person. And, and as you grow and develop, uh, your business will grow and develop. And, you know, but you have to get out of your comfort zone. And when you're in that that spot, you're like a snake shedding its skin. And it's very uncomfortable to do that. And that's where the coaching really shines is that we push you to shed and grow to that next level, even when you're not ready to do it and don't want to do it. But that's what the business demands. And we're there to push, put the brakes on when you're saying, oh, I'm going to delegate this. I'm going to go out and hire my sales manager. And I'm like, well, you don't have any properties yet. <laughs> like, let's <laughs> let's let's slow down here. Let's get let's get this the you know the infrastructure in place. So, um, I, I love this book. A CEO only does three things. And Landon, mm -hmm. what, what would you say your biggest takeaway has been so far? Um, so one of the I guess the parts that I really was liking, um, like. I, I, as a, we know that, yes, we have to establish a culture. So if you don't begin with that, what is expected? Um, I think we kind of lose track of like, what's our direction? Um, so that's more of, of, of where I felt like, yeah, that, that is something that I think that's something that we did. And I, you know, we did it in our business and not realizing that we were doing it. There was a certain expectation. And now everybody's held to that certain expectation. So it kind of led into who do we hire? Oh, do we keep this person? Uh, do we let them go? Um, so things like that. But I think that's more of the, the area that I really enjoyed or have been enjoying so far. Um, I still got a little bit to go, but it's it's been an interesting book so far. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank the listeners, remind you that the only way we're going to be able to continue to get Landon to not put his finger on his nose and, and take the tips of the week. Cause if you do three little favors, follow rate review, the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review support at 
thelandgeek.com. If you are interested in how you can become the CEO of your land business, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call and learn more. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Uh, dude, buddy, are we good? Yeah, um, we're good. Great to see you. So you glad too. you're back. Tria, are we good? Good. Yeah? Landon? We are good, Mark. Big Papa? Yep. All good, Benny. All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let's, Let, let's freedom, 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 freedom ring. 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 Thanks, everybody. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So uh, speaking of luxuries, I have a travel question. So I am flying out in luxurious style to Europe. Uh, but my time shifting app is telling me to stay up literally all night. So it's a night flight. I have to stay up the entire flight to time shift and then arrive in Italy in the afternoon, stay up all day and get on Italy time. But if not, I can do it. I've done it before, but I will be missing out on the luxurious aspect of the flight, which is this lay down bed. Oh, oh. you killing me, Mark. Saying no. <laughs> I can drink the craziest all thing I've ever heard. I don't know. Is this based on it's science a, or it's it's circadian rhythm? It's based on science, and I actually have to spend mm -hmm. like time in like the galley getting light the entire flight, so I won't because even be in my seat very much. So the internet can't lie to you, is what you're telling me. No, no, it's an app. It's an app. The exactly. App can't lie. It's an app. Don't lie. It's an app. Don't lie. All right, Mark. Let me ask you this: How much did it's, you pay for this science. app? <laughs> no, it was like three dollar app. It was a good. Okay, we, we so you're gonna take advice from a three dollar app? No, no, no. I actually, I take that back. It was more than that. Go, let me see. Four ninety nine, people. <laughs> it's legit. Time shift. Okay, wait. Timeshifter.com. Try it free. The shift work app. Yeah, I've never I'm telling you, you guys have to check this out. I don't no. know what it is. Probably a Reddit thread that's free there, Mark. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, just carry on like normal. It doesn't matter what time you go to bed or wake up. Yeah. After you're traveling all day, you're going to be exhausted regardless. That's, that's true. That's true. That is true. Yes. I mean, when I fly to California on Sunday, I'm going to be tired. And it's a 48 minute <laughs> flight. I was going to say that's a hop. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be tired on Sunday. Why? Because I had to go to the airport. That's why. It has nothing to do with flying. It has everything to do with going to the airport. That's what makes you tired. I'm. That's my theory. You're, okay, that's the worst science ever. There's science. <laughs> it's not science. Rooms. You're going through time zones. No. Uh, I have experienced jet lag, so I, you know, the European jet lag. It's a real thing. But totally. I, I I don't know. I, I I'm I have a hard time believing that if you stay up for 36 hours, no. that's going to make your journey more pleasant. I don't know. No. Just, you're going to be cranky, and you're going to yeah. miss out on a whole day in Europe. We've yeah. traveled internationally. We just kind of still maintain the flow. Take a nap on the flight, whatever. To me, coming back is far worse than going. Yeah. So, yeah. I, Th worse. this is this is a gift I'm getting my parents for their their eightieth birthdays. And so I haven't traveled with and them. At, oh, oh, oh the trip. Gonna, okay. expecting <laughs> yeah. them to stay up? So I'm, them to follow their schedule? I, I, no, not at, not at all. But I'm follow thinking, their schedule, Mark. You need I'm, to follow yeah. their list. <laughs> I'm th I'm thinking like if I'm gonna be cranky <laughs> and they're gonna be all cranky, I should just enjoy the flight, right? You should. Yeah, yeah I think so. Enjoy the flight. All right. Yeah. Sleep four, if you're four against one. Get the nap, man. All right. well, how about <laughs> melatonin or no melatonin? No. No. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Coffee. <laughs> no, no, mel no, melatonin helped me sleep. No, that night. no, he wants no, to sleep. coffee to stay up. To I, I, I got stay it. Up. Coffee when you get there, stay up. Oh, okay. <laughs> coffee. Okay. Coffee when I get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll keep yeah. you moving after you get there. And I, I quit coffee, so I should be very caffeine mm. sensitive. 
Yeah, you it's should. It's a red eye, cool. Mark. Is it a red eye? It's, it's a red eye. Oh. I mean, yeah. is it a yeah, I'm yeah, sure. because like, yeah, we leave yeah. that night and then arrive the next afternoon. It seems like I should just be able to sleep all night and arrive fresh. But yeah. according to the circadian rhythm, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> of course, God, not. Nice. You can talk about your hippie care. <laughs> I, I know. Seriously. Well, I look, I, I appreciate the, the therapy, you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Very, very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.